Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Good afternoon. We start with a live look at Macomb County where you can see a few flurries flying in the sky and more on the way when you can expect to see the biggest snow of the season so far. Plus, Clinton Township Police are investigating after a pregnant woman is shot outside of an apartment complex. We'll have an update on her condition. But we do begin with breaking news from Washington as the U.S. Senate formally receives the House's articles of impeachment. You are looking live on the Senate floor. The stage is set for the third impeachment trial of a president in United States history as the Senate formally takes the reins. A new NBC interview is threatening to shake up the proceedings. Susan McGinnis joins us now from Washington with an update. Today, the two articles of impeachment against President Trump now in the hands of the Senate. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts presiding over the trial. His first act, swearing in 100 senators who will sit as jurors. The president formally accused of coercing foreign interference in the 2020 election for his own benefit and obstructing Congress from investigating his actions. Republicans now in charge of the process calling it a partisan sham. They want the Senate to redo their homework and rerun the investigation. Today, the nonpartisan Government Accountability Office ruled the White House violated the law when it withheld congressionally approved security aid for Ukraine. This reinforces, again, the need for documents and eyewitnesses in the Senate. Now, a new interview raising the stakes as a central player in the Ukraine scandal breaks his silence in an interview with MSNBC's Rachel Maddow. I want to get the truth out. Lev Parnas, an indicted associate of President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, directly implicating President Trump in the scheme to strong-arm Ukraine's president into announcing investigations of the Bidens, allegations at the center of the impeachment trial. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he was aware of all of my movements. President Trump maintaining his innocence. They have a hoax going on over there. Let's take care of it. Judge and jury taking their places for only the third time in history, sitting in judgment of an American president. Parnas says he is willing to testify, but it is yet to be decided if any witnesses will be heard. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. Thank you, Susan. If the trial follows the same format as former President Clinton's impeachment trial, you can expect the Senate to meet six days a week except on Sunday, and the trial could take at least two weeks. Here at home, an investigation is underway after a pregnant woman is shot outside of an apartment complex. It happened early this morning at the Eastwood Village Apartments in Clinton Township. We want to get right out to Coco McAvoy and Coco police are still looking. I understand for the gunman. Do they know who they're looking for? Yes, that's right. Police do not know who they're looking for at this time. I just got off the phone with one of the captains, but they tell me that police did speak with a witness who said that the shooter left in a black vehicle of some kind. But the good news here this afternoon is that the woman and her baby are expected to be OK. Oh, it's just shocking. It gave me goosebumps when I found out it was her. Cinda Curley lives in the Eastwood Village apartment complex, where a pregnant woman in her 30s was shot in the stomach this morning. Police say it happened just before 7 o'clock. The woman was on her way to work and was getting into her car when someone shot her. I heard a big boom, just one big giant loud boom. The woman went to a neighbor's apartment for help. Police blocked off the parking lot where the shooting happened and spent hours collecting whatever evidence they could find. Now, the woman is in the hospital recovering as police search for the shooter. And if you know anything about who was involved in the shooting, you're asked to call the Clinton Township Police Department. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Back to you. Coco, thank you. And pretty remarkable that mom and baby are going to survive that. Thank you. Just into the Local 4 newsroom, crews are repairing a large water main break. Take a look at it. It's in Southfield, and it shows water spilling all over 8 Mile in Losser. You can see part of the road is shut down because of it, so if you live in the area, we're also being told that you may experience some discolored water, but city leaders are saying that it's still safe to drink. We'll let you know when everything is all clear. 
Meanwhile, we have meteorologist Paul Gross with us this noon to tell us about the forecast for the rest of the day. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of an eventful day, not as bad as what we're going to see this weekend, and we'll break that down for you in great detail coming up in just a little bit. But right now, we're, we've now dropped to near 30 on the east side, and we're now in the upper 20s at further west. Temps have just been kind of slowly sliding through the day, and we started the day with temps in the mid-30s and wind chills in the 20s. Well, now we have wind chills mostly in the teens across the area, and that's what it's going to be through the afternoon. So heading out right now, dress for teens. That's what it feels like. So you can see these lake effect snow bands here across the area. We've been watching one band over the thumb, but actually lately the most notable band has actually been surprisingly actually southwest Lapeer County to northeast Oakland County, northwest Macomb County. So we'll keep an eye on that. The visibilities are probably dropped in that area. We don't have a weather reporting station in that band, but it's probably snowing okay there. Pretty decent snowfall, but the rest of us flurries and light snow showers and temps continue that slide through the afternoon with those wind chills in the teens. Again, we have a pretty impactful winter storm coming this weekend. We'll talk about it in great detail in just a bit, Rhonda. All right, Paul, we'll see you here in a few. Meantime, two people are in custody after an armed robbery in Warren, and it prompted a manhunt in Sterling Heights. The robbery happened around midnight near Fraso and Mound, and we're told that two people robbed someone that they knew before taking off and fleeing towards Sterling Heights. Police believe that one of the men was armed with an AK-47. One person was taken into custody very early this morning. The other was the, well, the result of a manhunt and arrested a short time later. Today, the Michigan State Police Director was in Lansing answering questions about what are these issues with the breathalyzer testing state police have been using after possible fraud by a vendor that was servicing those breathalyzers. Colonel Joe Gasper confirmed that there have been discrepancies found in eight of 203 alcohol testing machines used here in Michigan and potent ally affected 52 suspected drunk driving cases statewide. Earlier this week, state police suspended ties with that vendor and now are only using blood draws in DUI cases for now. And it is back to court as the case of this toxic green chemical substance in Madison Heights continues. The city of Madison Heights is working to figure out how the now condemned building where the chemicals were stored can be safely demolished. Witnesses say that the building is unstable and not safe. The city wants Gary Sayers, the owner, to pay for the demolition. Prosecutors want the judge to visit the site, but no ruling on that has been made. Police looking to talk to this group of vandals seen damaging parking meters in Rochester. It happened back in November, right in downtown Rochester, and you can see them uh, really doing a number on these parking meters, kicking it. Another person and another member of the group team up to try to completely destroy it and pull it apart, kicking it even more and then grabbing what's left of it and smashing it to the sidewalk. If you recognize them, you are asked to contact Rochester Police. Home decor company Pier One is closing 22 Michigan stores. The company announced earlier this month that 450 of their stores nationwide were going to close. The closure comes as the company continues to struggle to draw customers in and compete with other online stores. Some of the closing stores in Metro Detroit include a store in Ann Arbor, Brighton, Chesterfield, and Harper Woods. We do have that full list of Michigan stores on clickondetroit.com. But Pier 1 is such a great store. Really sad to see that. Still to come, Prince Harry makes his first public appearance since announcing that he and wife Meghan are stepping down as senior royals. What he was doing just a day after Meghan's surprise visit to a women's center. And now we are going to take you live to Washington where the House managers are delivering the articles of impeachment to the Senate floor. 100 senators will sit as jurors in the impeachment trial against President Trump. We're back in a moment.